remain on the streets. That's the message from Turkey's president to his supporters as the government continues to arrest those it says are responsible for the failed coup. But how will this impact Turkey's relations with its neighbors and other countries? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program in Doha. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is vowing to purge the military of what he calls the virus responsible for Friday night's failed coup. Thousands of soldiers and judges have been arrested in a crackdown as the government reasserts its control. But what does an unstable Turkey mean for the region? And has the failed coup affected Ankara's relations with the West? Erdogan has blamed this man, Fethullah Gulen of being behind the coup. Gulen is the Turkish leader of the so-called Gulenist movement and has been living in self-imposed exile in the US state of Pennsylvania. He's been described as one of the world's most important Muslim leaders and has millions of followers. His presence in the US could put a strain on relations between Washington and Ankara and Turkey is calling for his extradition. After this coup attempt, I again call on US President Barack Obama I say, give this person in Pennsylvania to Turkey already. I say to the United States, if we are strategic partners, if we are model partners, please comply with your partner's request, because we have given you every terrorist that you wanted from us. But Fethullah Gulen denies President Erdogan's accusations. I need to know who the plotters are before I can say whether I know if they have played a role or not. Are they people who have certain feelings against certain other people? They might have sympathy, for example, with the main opposition party, the Nationalist Movement Party, because they have animosity towards others. These things we can't know. I've been here for 15 to 16 years, and I don't have the means to follow what is taking place over there. So why is this failed coup so significant? Well, Turkey is seen as an important interlocutor with uh, regional powers and is at the center of the fight against ISIL and Europe's refugee crisis. It's also an important member of NATO with huge military power. Turkey has been an important ally of the U.S. in challenging Russia and has also openly backed forces wanting to remove Syria's President Bashar al-Assad from power. The EU has had to rely on Turkey as it struggles to cope with the worst refugee crisis since the Second World War. It signed an agreement with the Turkish government last March that's helped to slow the number of refugees arriving in Europe. And Turkey acts as a buffer state in the fight against ISIL, but has been accused of failing to stop the flow of foreign fighters into Syria. Immediately after the failed coup on Friday, Turkey's government closed its operations at the Insulik Air Base, a critical hub for the U.S., its jets and drones targeting ISIL in Syria. Well, let's discuss all of this further with our guests. Joining us today from Ankara, we're joined by Yusuf Kanli, who's uh, a Turkish journalist, the former editor of Hurriyet Daily News. And from Brussels, we're joined by Mark Pierini, a former EU ambassador to Turkey. Gentlemen, welcome. Um, Yusuf, after accusations from Turkey, the U.S. State Department issued uh, a statement denying any links to the events of Friday night, saying, quote, public insinuations or claims about any role by the United States in the failed coup attempt are utterly false and harmful to our bilateral relations. Yusuf, what do you make of the U.S.'s response in general to Friday night and its aftermath? Uh, you know, it has a historical background. When in 1980 the generals took power in Ankara, uh, the first report uh, coming to Ankara from uh, Washington was, our guys did it. That indeed uh, cemented the perception here, the plot theories here, that whatever happens, uh, whatever uh, the mil Turkish military undertakes, it has a hand of the Pentagon in it. Uh, that's, uh, that's one uh, perception. The other is, as you know, Fethullah Gülen, uh, the religious leader of the uh, Gülen movement, is living, has been living in Pennsylvania for the past almost two decades, uh, since 1998, indeed. Uh, that has been a trauma, 
in uh, Turkish American relations for some time. The Turkish government has been asking for his extradition to Turkey, while the Americans are saying there is no official extradition request. Everything so far has been in verbal. Plus, to demand extradition of Gülen, Turkey must provide evidence showing that he was involved in any way in crime in Turkey. So, Yusuf, sh should we give any credence at all to these accusations uh, that are coming out of uh, Turkey at the moment? Uh, th these accusations, uh, these accusations, I, I believe, are baseless. Uh, this is an uh, obsession of the government that uh, that uh, Gülen is involved in all these, uh, and uh, through Gülen, the Americans are involved in all this. I think this is an over exaggeration. Mark Pierini, uh, do you agree with that? Turkey uh, has declared that any state that stands by uh, Gulen uh, is an enemy. Comments like that are not going to help uh, relations between Turkey and the U.S., are they? No, and um, this is a standard uh, nationalist populist narrative. Uh, as uh, Yusuf just said, uh, the U.S. has a very precise extradition law and uh, despite all the rumbling about the Gulen involvement and so on, uh, what the U.S. administration, the U.S. judiciary needs is a solid file with proofs, and apparently there is not even a formal request. So that is essentially for domestic consumption. Mark, uh, you wrote uh, yesterday that since the coup attempt, the West has voted Erdogan, and for very simple reasons. Would you l care to elaborate on, on those reasons for us? Yeah, well, uh, the uh, immediate uh, reaction of the West, US and, and EU, is, is based on two things and are true to their normal standard uh, policies. One is that elected institutions, elected governments should be respected, so a coup is not something that the West is going to approve. And it did, it disapproved very quickly in the middle of the night and very strongly. The second thing is that following a coup, one expects a, a crackdown, and, and there is uh, the point where you, you reach uh, maybe a difference. As many of the Western political leaders have said since uh, the night of the coup, the failed coup, is that the judicial process should follow according to rule of law, according to, to uh, a due process. And that is now the main fear. We've seen already that not only close to 3,000 military have been arrested, uh, but we also see close to uh, 3,000 uh, judges being arrested. What is the link between judges and the coup? We don't know yet. Yeah, Yusuf, you wanted to make a point there? Plus, plus, plus Mark, uh, don't forget that despite the law, two uh, constitutional court judges are detained and arrested and officially charged with uh, some uh, involvement in this, all, in all this, whereas the law says uh, high court judges can only be judged at the high court. I mean, we are abandoning, we are bypassing all the uh, rules of law, uh, even the established ones, and uh, we are uh, trying to take revenge of some sort, which is very, very, is very worrisome. But, but Yusuf, the, 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 the judiciary, the accusation is that the ju judiciary has been infiltrated by, by Gulenists. That might have been the case, but uh, we should not forget that uh, the judiciary that this government is complaining of, or the Gulenists that this government is complaining of, were the allies of yesterday. They know it better than I, which I, I as a journalist, I have always been in a position. Therefore, uh, I cannot know exactly to what extent they were Gulenists or to what extent uh, the government is exaggerating. But the very fact is that these guys were together with the government yesterday in cracking down nationalists, Kemalists, uh, uh, patriots in the country uh, that were critical of the government's applications. Remember the 2007-2013 period until these two groups started to clash in between themselves. I mean, I, mean, I say two these groups, the ruling party and the Gulenists. Mark Pierini, uh, France's President Francois Hollande says that um, 
he'd now expect a period of repression following the coup. From what you're saying, you, you, you think he's, he's right. How will that affect, if he is right, uh, Turkey's relations with its EU neighbours? Well, the main worry it lies in, in one simple statement made by uh, the President of Turkey upon return to Istanbul. He uh, said, and I'm not exactly quoting, but he said that this coup was a gift from God. It will help us uh, cleanse the, the state of uh, uh, these Our people. Portion. So uh, that is uh, where the EU, the US as well, is expecting rule of law to apply. But of course, if you look at the evolution of the political game within Turkey in the past three years, let's say, uh, you, you see that there is an increasing tendency to more authoritarianism. Uh, and therefore, as much as the coup has been condemned by Western leaders and European leaders very early on, uh, there is this other worry that this coup will serve as a pretext to reinforce uh, uh, authoritarianism in, in Turkey. Yusuf, is, is that how you see it? Is that going to where happen? Where is, where is, Mark? Uh, yes, unfortunately, that's what I said, and uh, I would like to add one more one very important element to it. You know, this coup was averted not because the government's uh, forces, the police and others, uh, repelled the, uh, those who were supporting the coup. On the contrary, the coup was averted thanks to the free media of this country, because the free media didn't obey the rules of the uh, of the coupists, they rejected orders, they continued broadcasts, they tried to fulfill their basic duty of informing people, and they provided a platform to the to Erdogan and the government to ask uh, to call people to take to the streets, and thus once people poured out the streets, the the queue collapsed. Therefore, it uh, the queue collapsed thanks to the free media, and now. Uh, I am very much concerned that uh, uh, the element that helped to quell uh, the coup might come under increased pressure. Uh, we, um, we are already under pressure in this country, and it appears from the vigilance of the crackdown, it appears that it will soon aim at media further. Okay, I, I, want, I want to get back to, to Turkey's external relations, if I can. Mark, you, you talked about this, this comment that the President Erdogan uh, made, paraphrasing that the coup was a, was a, was a gift from, from God. What will Turkey's NATO allies make of, of, of a statement like that? Well, uh, essentially, uh, it's worrying for two reasons. One is that it seems to comfort the, the trend that we've seen in Turkey since the presidential, ele presidential election of 2014 of reinforcing the presidential powers and we all know about this uh, project of a super executive presidency which is not there yet but uh, being, being uh, uh, really pursued actively. The second thing is, is uh, the religious reference. As we have seen during uh, the night when the coup failed uh, we had two things at work. One, the president, in a kind of masterful move, uh, went on FaceTime with a, a free media, by the way, belonging to a group that he had been fighting before, and addressed the nation through FaceTime. That was a masterful stunt, if I may say so, because uh, the president was isolated in Marmaris uh, and didn't have much else to do than addressing the nation in his usual way, asking people to support him. That's one thing. But in the following hour, the imams uh, started calling the people to the street, uh, saying by order of the president and the Dianet, Dianet being the religious authority of Turkey. This is a first in Turkey when the political leadership is using the religious structure to conduct politics. And, and that will concern... Uh, this is new and concern, this is not something... That will concern NATO's allies? Oh, of course, yes, because uh, uh, we uh, all rely in the West, in NATO, on uh, secularist uh, constitutions. All right. Uh, and you, Turkey Yusuf, formally uh, does so as well. Yusuf, t just picking up on what you were saying a few moments ago, but, but let's look at it from an international standpoint. There have long been concerns in the West of, over Turkey's shift away from... 
uh, democracy to a more authoritarian style of leadership. Where do, do Friday's events leave those Western calls for democracy and rule of law? You know, as, uh, as a media member, I must underline, I am not a for or against a certain politician. Uh, we are for democracy, freedoms, rights and liberties. And unfortunately, on Friday night, uh, what we saw all night from about uh, 1.30 or so to until the morning and even uh, lay, until the noon that day, we had uh, calls from the minarets for people to take to the streets. Uh, we, we had uh, prayers on the, uh, from the uh, minarets and we had, as Mark just said, uh, statements uh, be, being read out that uh, it's the order of the president uh, to go out and such. Uh, that's of course very worrisome because uh, first we, we, we want to believe that Turkey is still a secular democracy. Uh, will that uh, uh, be upheld? I have doubts. I have doubts, particularly this scene of, uh, I mean, we, we didn't see it in full tank court, but the reported claim of a soldier beheaded at the Istanbul Bridge was very worrisome. The, Turkey had never ever had such uh, scenes in the past. And such a country will have drastic uh, consequences in its relations with the West if that part is continued. That's why I expect uh, Turkey will uh, have some sort of moderation once this uh, trauma is over. Now we are still, it's very, very hot. And I understand uh, the president and uh, the ruling party, they are all carried away with the fact that how this happened. It's difficult to understand for them as well. But uh, frankly, uh, many people were uh, in some way uh, expecting such things to happen in Turkey in this manner, uh, unfortunately. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about another aspect here uh, that will be of concern to uh, Turkey's uh, allies. Mark. Um, France's foreign minister said that questions must now be asked on whether Turkey is a viable partner in the fight against ISIL. Well, what do you think the events of Friday night mean for the fight against ISIL? Well, you have two considerations here. One is the immediate one that for uh, some 24 hours, the Angelic Air Force Base was closed. Uh, it's now reopened apparently since the last hour or so. So operations against the uh, uh, Islamic State have started again. Uh, that might have been linked to the post-coup uh, operations. Uh, the uh, Turkish uh, commander of the base has been arrested with several others. So that's perhaps something little and temporary. What is of concern to Minister Ero and many others in Europe and the US is Turkey's ambivalence uh, for the past two years about ISIL. Uh, it's quite clear that the remaining stretch of uh, the Syrian-Turkish border that remains occupied by ISIS on the south, on the southern side, uh, is the only lifeline to ISIS for jihadists, for ammunition, and for oil coming out of the territory. So if the policy of the coalition is to smother ISIS, and ISIS is on the run, as we all know, well, it takes a decisive move by Turkey. And therefore, the questions that are going to be asked in the forthcoming meeting of the coalition is, is Turkey uh, ready to fulfill the pledge and and that is of course a very strong expectation all the more so that you've had these tragic events in France now but in Belgium uh, three months ago or four months ago almost so this is uh, uh, clearly uh, an expectation from the Western partners of Turkey. Yusuf, g given Turkey's what 600 kilometers along border with 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 Syria and the fight against ISIL, can we expect, do you think now, a decisive move by, by Turkey against ISIL? And, and it's as far as, as Turkey's relations you know, with the coalition ISIL. and the U.S., hang on, hang on, who needs who more right now, Turkey or the U.S.? Uh, we all need both. Uh, I mean, uh, just remember what happened at the Istanbul airport last week or what happened in Turkey over the past six months. ISIL is not a threat only to the United States or uh, to the Europeans. It's a threat to Turkey as well. But unfortunately, except an endorsement of a UN uh, uh, 
ban on ISIL. We couldn't yet uh, declare ISIL a, a terrorist organization in Turkey officially. We, we have to take some moves, and perhaps Turkey's European allies and the Americans will have to force Turkey to take such uh, legal uh, moves and declare officially ISIL a terrorist organization. I mean, just uh, approving a UN uh, decision doesn't mean much, uh, as we have seen. As regards who needs uh, the other most, of course we need each other, but unfortunately the Americans need Turkey as well. Because uh, this border must be sealed. And for that, uh, the Turkish cooperation is needed. And, and Mark, I, I want to come back to, to Turkey's relations with the EU. Of course, we had, we had uh, 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 the deal over, uh, over refugees, uh, the talk of visa-free travel for Turks. Outside Parliament, after the, the attempted coup, uh, crowds chanted, bring back the death penalty. And the Prime Minister said, yeah, I heard your message, and that the necessary will be done. How would, will statements like that, or perhaps even the reintroduction of the, of the death penalty, affect Turkey's EU aspirations? Well, the political narrative about the death penalty, um, well, that's worrying, but it's only a narrative. If ever the death penalty is reintroduced, this is now going to be a major rift with the EU, because I will recall that when in December 2004, there was an agreement uh, in the European Council to open accession negotiations with Turkey. That was on the, on the basis of a number of reforms that Turkey had conducted. Number one of these reforms was the abolition of death penalty. Uh, so this issue has been coming back at times in the Turkish political narrative. But if it was ever done, uh, that would be a rift of major importance, probably leading to the suspension of the accession negotiation. Not that I believe uh, Ankara would care too much about the suspension of the accession negotiations because, in fact, if you look at the technical and political conditionality of these accession negotiations, they have now become a clear impediment uh, to uh, the uh, policies followed by the Turkish leadership. If you look at public procurement, competition policy, or indeed a rule of law, freedom of expression, okay. everything that is requested of Turkey, uh, it goes against the grain. I, I, I see Yusuf smiling there. Yusuf, I have a feeling this is going to be uh, uh, the, uh, our last answer here. Just, I mean, just how death, much... Death penalty, just, death penalty, yeah, just death how much, penalty would be just an addition <laughs> okay. how to much, the already existing problems. And I don't think... <laughs> how, yes. let, how much damage have the events of Friday night done to Turkey's reputation globally uh, and, and economically? Q itself is a, a b very big important event, but uh, put it aside, calling people to occupy Istanbul airport that night and allowing people, thousands of people, entering in, uh, in the airport premises without controls, without any security check, resulted in immediately with the American uh, Aviation Authority uh, closing down, uh, putting a ban on flights from Istanbul. This is, th that was uh, incredible. Uh, but uh, to come back to your uh, real question, a coup in Ankara proved once again that uh, the Turkish democracy is not uh, at a level uh, of the European democracies that we are trying, we are aspiring to join in. We still have uh, the illness of trying to solve our problem by using force. Uh, that's why, indeed, uh, many people like myself, we are supportive of the government, we are supportive of the crackdown of the coup, but we, want, uh, we expect the government uh, to use this uh, as an instrument, as an occasion to consolidate democracy. And uh, if that is not done, then uh, Turkey's image will be further strained, not only in the EU, but throughout the world as a, as a third world country uh, incapable of putting itself into order without violence. Okay. And, and, and Yusuf, there, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it. Many thanks to you both, Yusuf Kanli in Ankara and Mark Pirini in Brussels. And thank you for watching. Don't forget you can see the program again anytime just by visiting aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, why not go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation 
on Twitter. Our handle at AJ Inside Story from me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.